It's a Tuesday on the Oregon coast. This is the tourist town of Seaside. It's a weekday, so the beaches are not nearly as packed as they would be on the weekend, but there's still crowds, and the main drag through town still bustles with visitors. I'm from Wyoming. Sacramento, California. Longview, Washington. This is a typical day in the Oregon coastal town, but geologists will tell you there will be one day, perhaps in the not-so-distant future, that will turn all this upside down. So the whole town will turn into a giant lake full of floating houses and debris and floating cars. Tom Horning, a geologist of over 30 years and a seaside city councilor, says that day will come when the Cascadia subduction zone, a fault about 70 miles offshore, ruptures in a catastrophic magnitude 8 or 9 earthquake. As one section of the earth plunges below another, the seafloor will instantaneously lift up. The ocean above will bulge, sending a massive wave barreling toward the west coast. At first, from the beach here in Seaside, it will appear as if the tide is going out, but way too fast. Then, about 15 to 20 minutes later, the leading edge of the wave will hit the beach. At 25 minutes, the water will start flooding over the promenade here and pouring down the city streets. At about that same time, a massive foaming breaker about a mile out will be racing in. That's the crest of the tsunami. When it comes on shore, it will be anywhere from 25 to 55 feet above the sand here, possibly even higher. And it'll come right up and over everything, and it'll go up into the third and fourth floor of some of these motels. Those on the top floors of the newer buildings, the ones constructed to withstand both an earthquake and tsunami, might be safe as they watch the waves swallow the town behind them. Well, the water would cover all of the buildings out here. Most of the city would be underwater for at least a little while. But hopefully by that time, people in town will have evacuated to higher ground if they happen to see these evacuation signs, which point which way to go. This little decal on the road here is a tsunami evacuation sign telling you to go that direction towards the hills. Still, they'll have to move pretty quickly once the shaking of the massive quake stops. You have 20 to 25 minutes to get to safety. Driving to safety will be nearly impossible as fleeing drivers jam up the roads. The best option will be walking. Some will run. In order to get to a safe area, folks will have to cross one of 11 bridges. But according to some engineers, only four will remain intact following the quake. When it's all over, about 90 percent of the homes in town will be destroyed. But there will be a much greater cost. Well, if it happened during the summer on a busy weekend in the town, fills up with 40,000 people, the fatality rates is, are going to be maybe 60 percent. That's 24,000 people. And experts tell us this is not a worst case scenario. This would be more of a typical scenario, one the city of Seaside is planning for. Well, this is one of four bridges that the city has replaced already with earthquake proof structures. In addition to the four new earthquake proof bridges. Well, this is the site for the new school district uh, uh, school facilities. A brand new high school is being built well out of the inundation zone. A water tank will go in above it so the campus will have much needed drinking water following the quake. Thousands of people may need to come up here. They are all improvements coastal cities like Seaside are making almost entirely on their own, doing what they can to make sure their residents and visitors will be able to make it to safety. Not if, but when the tsunami strikes. So you're saying it could happen at any time? Yeah, it could happen at any time or it may not happen for 500 years.